Han un hor ye vork po ye vo queen sor po. Amen. My dear brothers and sister, I give praise to God that we have gathered once again in our holy church of the holy resurrection to offer our prayers to our heavenly father. I'm especially thankful that unlike last year, one year ago when the faithful weren't able to come into the church, thanks be to God, the doors of the church are open. Just as Didatsu chanted at the beginning of the service, Pats Mesder, Pats Mesder, Pats Mesder is Turun Vogor Mutian. Open unto us, O God, the doors, the gates of your mercy. And, and behold, uh, we have a gathered, and by God's grace, our numbers will even increase Sunday after Sunday. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday. And whenever I think about Palm Sunday, I have experienced a little bit of anxiety in myself because I'm not sure if this is to be a really exciting and joyous day or is it to be a little more subdued because I, in my part of my mind, is thinking about what is to transpire in just a few days, the crucifixion suffering of our Lord, the saddest day we could imagine. But when I look at the sharagans of the feast today, as well as the scripture readings, I'm reminded that today is a day of celebration. Um, the opening line of the Ornutun Sharagan, the major um, Sharagan hymn of our morning prayer, of our night office, talks about the one who is exalted and blessed upon the cherubic, the angelic thrones, these great and powerful thrones in heaven, where Jesus, our Lord and King, is seated. This one is exalted and blessed, but today, he is seated on a beast, on a donkey. <laughs> You've all seen donkeys. They're the most humble of animals. Beautiful extreme, something for us to reflect upon. Today is also a day of rejoicing because the Apostle Paul, in the opening line of his letter to the Philippians, says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So even though part of my mind is thinking about the sadness that is to come in a few days, yet I am reminded, I am brought back, that this is a day of joy because this is the beginning, the entrance, if you will, not, into, not only into Jerusalem by our Lord, but our entry into salvation, our entry into the kingdom of eternal joy. It's also a day when we reflect upon humility. This is the message we want to take home, I think, today with us, humility. And again, Paul, writing to the Philippians, says, Hezutyunzer, haitnilitsi, amenain markan. May your humility my humility, your humility, be seen before other people. Let people know you by your humility, right? And this humility has a, an amazing connection again to what is to happen on the cross in just a few days. In the Orthodox Church, they have the icon which is called extreme humility. It's an icon of the passion of our Lord. 
when you look at the Lord's icon of his suffering and his death on the cross, you need to think of humility. Because that same person who was exalted in, the, in heaven, in the angelic thrones, upon the angelic thrones, that one has come today into Jerusalem riding on the most humble of beasts, calling us all to humility. The last point I'd like to make is something that every year strikes me in the gospel reading appointed for Palm Sunday. And typically, because the gospel passage from Matthew is so long, we usually cut that first part. And behold, that's what happened today uh, when it was read in Armenian. The first part was chopped off. But thankfully, the English, um, the English was read in full. And the opening part, I think, is so important. It really speaks to me because, first of all, in your mind, you're getting ready to read about our Lord Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. You know the story. I'm not going to repeat the story. And all the people are rejoicing and shouting out, Hosanna, blessed is the son of David, etc., etc. And so we're eager to get into the meat of the passage. But the introduction really is important for us. And what is that introduction? If Jesus is coming in, getting ready to enter into Jerusalem on the side of the road, Depend depending on what gospel, there were either one or two blind men. In Mark's, it's one. In Matthew, which we heard a little while ago, two blind men by the side of the road. Homeless, no doubt. And this year, especially in New York, we have so many homeless people, and I immediately connect that. And the words from these blind people, these blind men, were, what? Have mercy on us, son of David. They can't see him. Their, their eyes are blind. Yet I would say that their spiritual eyes are open. And they sense who this is, who is coming. And they are the first people in the Palm Sunday story to identify Jesus, to recognize who he is, and to proclaim that he is the son of David, the one who is sent, the Messiah, the one who has been anointed to be the savior of the world. They are, if you will, these two blind, homeless people, they are the ones that are inviting us into Palm Sunday, they are the ones who are inviting us into Holy Week, and they are the ones who hopefully inspire us, can inspire me to open my eyes, not only my physical eyes, so I can see all of you wonderful Christians who have gathered here and to rejoice for that, but even more so to open my spiritual eyes so that I see Jesus in, in the other. As you have done to the least, of these, my brothers and sisters, Jesus said, you have done unto me. So see Jesus in his entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. See Jesus in your brothers and sisters of the Holy Resurrection Armenian Church. See the Lord Jesus and those whom you work with, those with whom you study, and those who you pass by in the store or elsewhere in your daily life. And to Christ our God, who enters Jerusalem this day, for whom we rejoice at this extreme example of humility, to him be glory, now and always, and unto the ages of ages.